Hi guys, Keith Larkmer Farms. Project Strawberry is a go. So I got the plow on Granddad's old Kubota tractor. Get ready to turn this into strawberry beds. Let me show you. So, came through, this is where all the uh, flowers were for the u pick. So there was a grass strip, a row, a grass strip, another bed, a grass strip, another bed, a grass strip, and the corn, we actually got like four or five years of corn this year, which is pretty awesome. Raccoons usually eat it. But the problem I have now is, it's now September. My strawberries are gonna be here at any time. I have to get them in the ground quick, which means the only way to do that is to actually plow the land. So I'll plow and flip it over to the two bottom plow. Because what I was trying to do, you can kind of see it behind me there, is the grass, do a quick till because these are going to go in plastic culture, which means I have to have this soil really friable. Right now it is, but there's just so much trash in it, it's not going to cooperate with me. So the idea is I'm going to turn it over and then I'll disc it and then I'll be able to make my bed and then I'll be able to lay the plastic over the top and plant the strawberries in it. But first things first, I got to get this plowed over. Let me take you over the tractor and show you what I got on it. So this is an old two bottom plow I picked up. Drove about 40, 50 miles to get it. Good size, especially for this little teeny tiny tractor. 16 horse, B7100. It will pull it, just barely. Did have to go through and cut off some of the bracing because it was actually running into my three-point control arms. So now I'm able to actually offset it correctly to where before it was shifted over further here. So what I did was measured from this point over to this blade right here. So from furrow to furrow and it was about 14 inches. So I want the same furrow to come off of here to here. And so I've moved it over 14 inches from the tire. That way I've got 14 and 14. It'll take the chunk of ground and it'll lay it over upside down. Now, I am by no means an expert in tractor or doing tractor farming or cultivation, but if we're doing anything on a small scale like this, where I'm actually plowing, which is gonna take this chunk of land and flip it over onto the chunk adjoining it. The best way I know of to start this is I'm going to run down this way and I'm going to take this strip right here and only one of my plows will go in the ground and it'll take it and flip it over to here. Then I'll come back down from that end and I'll come back this way with my tire in this plowed out spot and I'll take this chunk and what's there, flip it over and this other chunk here and flip it over. Then I'll be able to continue across the bed and plow out this whole entire field. So to start with, I just uh, strung a string line down the whole entire field that way I have something to reference my tractor off of for my first run, and at least the first run will be straight. Ideally they'll all be straight, but I know by the end I'll get a little weedy, it always happens. So we'll give it a shot and just kind of see how it works. Okay, so now I've got my first furrow opened up here. Click you back there. So I've got this opened up. Didn't do as much of flipping as it did pushing because I went through and tilled this pretty good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back from the other direction now and come back this way and my tire will ride in this track and it should take this section here and flip it into this hole and this section over here and flip it into that hole that was just made. So I'm going to turn around and uh, do that.
also kind of regretting the whole tilling thing because it's kind of just pushing it. It is kind of moving it over where I think I'm burying most of the debris. Let me turn you around and show you. So this is what I'm really looking for right here. Nice cut off, flipped over. Everything up top is now on the bottom. What I'm getting, getting a nice furrow going, but it's just taking everything and it's just kind of pushing it over to the side. It's not finishing the flip to it. So the debris, especially out here on this outside one, didn't go anywhere. Here, got nice fresh clean soil and then all of my debris is right here. So I'm hoping as I go it's going to push a little better. I might have to even go faster. I'm going to experiment with the speed. But that's what I'm really looking for right there. Not where it's like that. I'm building up some nice little furrows. So we'll make another run at it. Alright, so that time I got a lot better dig in. Um, like I said, the tractor's only 16 horsepower, so pulling that thing is quite a bit of effort. But, you can just see behind me, see how dark these two furrows are? Compared to that one over there, how light it is? This one's actually getting down deeper into the ground and really, really picking up what it's supposed to be picking up. There you go. You see how dark those are? But I'm still having trouble getting traction, being able to pull it. When it goes that deep, but I am getting what I want. This is completely turned over. There's nothing, no residue on the surface, both of them. It's exactly what I want. I'm very, very happy about that. But to help with the uh, whole no traction thing, went over to the uh, pile of dirt over there, filled the bucket. Let's get that out of there. So now I've got some more weight on the front. Do another one, see how it works. Um, as I was telling you earlier, First run, I started up and went back. Every run after that, I'm gonna start at the bottom and then work my way up the row. There's another method of doing this where you start in the center and then you just go back and forth and back and forth. So, and go back and then go out and go back. But, it's always really confusing to me. And I don't wanna have the extra dirt pushed over somewhere. What I'm doing right now where I end at, I'm going to have this extra open furrow no matter where I stop at. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because it wouldn't probably be a bad deal to turn over this whole entire U-pick because honestly it's never been done before. I mean it's been cropland forever. They've disked it but it's never really been fully turned. I can't remember the last time they even deep disked this thing so it'd be really beneficial at least in the short run, get everything turned over. I also run my deep shanks and really get the ground broken up underneath because I know where the tractor, the big agriculture tractors used to run up and down this field and then make turns. And I can always find over in the market beds where they made the turns at because the ground is so hard, just like six inches underground that you almost break the broad fork. I think we actually did break the broad fork and bent tines on it many times. When I hit it with the uh, deep shanks, I can feel it as well. So hopefully I'm getting most of that really compact sub layer out of here. But for now, I'm just going to keep running on this and get the rest of this bed tilled up. All right, I know that's just riveting action there of me driving down, disappearing, coming back and driving back down. So I'm gonna keep going on this. Um, it's working eh, pretty good. I really, really, really should not have tilled it beforehand. I think that would have given me a lot better pick and flip over. It would help if it was just ground just a little bit moisture. And I got pretty good ground moisture out here, but been pretty dry lately so 
I mean, it crumbles and it pops. And here's the test. You grab a handful, makes a ball. That might actually be perfect. But also, I've never done this out here. So the ground is extremely hard where the tractor goes, like I was saying. I can actually feel it. I'll, I'll be going along just fine. And then all of a sudden I'll hit a little section like right in here. And then another width up, which is probably a good 30 some feet apart, which is about what the tractor turns because I believe they have 16 foot rigs on the back of most of them. And when we cut out one year here and moved over, we uh, had them turn in here again. Same thing we've hit down there in those beds. So we get back to this here in just a second and uh, I'll show you the final results and then take a look at the sunflower field. I'm going to shoot that here uh, actually later on today. That'll be coming out tomorrow. This will be coming out the week after. But I was doing this and I really want to do a video on that. So that's why I jumped in here real quick. So I'll get it finished up. All right. It's been about a week. I almost forgot to shoot this. Um, disc on the tractor here. Got that hooked up earlier. Already made a couple runs. It's not quite like I'd want it. There's still a lot of dark spots back here to where um, it's still a little wet. But at this point, I just need to knock it over and I'll come back and turn it again. So I'm going to run back and forth just with the disc and try to create a nice flat seed bed. Come back here hopefully tomorrow or the next day, do the same thing. And then we'll make our beds and get ready to lay the plastic and we'll do strawberries. So the one thing I did forget to mention is turn this over and then we got about eight inches of rain over like three different rain periods over the week. So it's been really wet out here and it is finally getting to the point now to where the top has started to dry off. So I need to get this turned and at least get it flattened a little bit. And there I can work on actually making the seed beds here next week. So I'm going to get to it and shoot the footage of me driving back and forth. So the battery's running low. So it's kind of hard to see what I'm shooting here. But what I'm trying to show you here is how dark to light this is. Because the stuff on top, like say this chunk, is dry on top. It is wet on the bottom. I mean, we are, this stuff turns to concrete when it gets hard and crusty like this. So what I'm trying to do is start to get this stuff broken back up and flattened back out because I turned it over and then of course it rained a whole bunch in the process but it's got a good turn on it I'll keep breaking on it I'm probably gonna have to come through here with my s tines at least once and then the disc again and then hill it and then bed it okay so back on the tractor again day after I shot the last one um, got my Danish S tines hooked up here if you want to see more about those uh, look up Wonder Bar Tool Bar I'm pretty sure I did a video with the S tines or uh, planting cover crop is another one I did where I had the Danish S tines behind me where I did the sunflower field behind me before I planted so what I'm gonna leave you with today it will be a tour of the sunflower field with some music that was on my phone some generic Samsung stuff so Hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.